Iran's Ayatollah Khamenei wants a high turnout for this week's parliamentary elections to stop the mouths of Iran's enemies. Critics note that President Obama's failure to embrace Iran's reform movement in 2009 means Iranian voters are now stuck with a choice between candidates who support either of two radical hardliners, President Mahmoud Ahmadinejad or the Ayatollah. Meanwhile, Obama warned this week that a nuclear-armed Iran is unacceptable, and all options, including military, are still on the table, adding, quote, as President of the United States, I don't bluff. We have had a foreign policy of bluster and saber-rattling and uh, tough talk. And in the meantime, we make a series of strategic decisions that actually strengthen Iran. Israel's Defense Minister Ehad Barak has arrived at the Pentagon ahead of talks with his U.S. counterpart, Leon Panetta. The two leaders are expected to discuss Iran's nuclear ambitions. Israel's Defense Minister Ehud Barak made his way to the Pentagon on a rainy Wednesday morning for a meeting with U.S. Defense Secretary Leon Panetta. The visit comes amid rising tensions between Israel and Iran. The two leaders are expected to discuss Iran's nuclear ambitions. Iran rejects accusations that its nuclear program is a covert bid to develop nuclear weapons capability, saying it is seeking to produce only electricity. Barack's visit comes ahead of Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu's visit to Washington on March 5th, when he is expected to meet with U.S. President Barack Obama in the White House. Well, I'm, I'm really excited about a lot of his ideas, uh, especially when it comes to bringing the soldiers home. I've been serving for 10 years now, and all 10 years of those have been during wartime. I'd like to see a little peacetime army, and I think he has the right idea. Now you have done two tours in Afghanistan. You told me you're going to go back for a, for a third tour. I mean, if you can see your, your neck right there, what you have on your tattoo, 9-11, remember, and a picture of the Twin Towers. You know, some Republicans out there have been saying that Ron Paul would be very dangerous for this country because he wants to bring troops like you back from your post from all over the world. Well, I think it would be even more dangerous to start nitpicking wars with other countries. Someone like Iran, Israel is more than capable of... All right, we just lost our tech connection. Hello, everyone. Welcome to Global Government News. Today is Friday, March 2nd, 2012, and I'm Darko. My website is ggnonline.com, and on YouTube, it's ddarko2012 and ddarko2013. Please subscribe if you can. There's a place where you can put your, in your email address right there. You can get updates. I have a poll up here. When do you think or feel the crap will hit the fan? And the majority of people are saying within the next uh, 12 months, i.e. year, followed by three months so it seems like it's either going to be what never that's the third one is um never it will be a smooth transition which is quite possible believe it or not that uh, <laughs> nothing goes our way and it just goes towards the elite's way and they get exactly what they want um so but it seems like it's going to be either kind of pretty soon or it's never going to happen so all right, so I'm going to move on here. All links will be posted in YouTube's video description. Please check them out. All right, so the first article I have up is Brazil takes the lead in trying to prevent another senseless war. I'll cover the Middle East, Iran, and Syria, and we'll move on to other news, including the economy and that in the next uh, two sets. So Brazil's foreign minister made a courageous and very important statement last week about the rising threat of a military attack on Iran. He asked the UN Secretary General Ban Ki-moon to weigh in on the legality of a threatened military strike against Iran. He was quoted as saying, one, uh, one sometimes hears the expression, all options on the table, but some actions are contrary to international law, end quote, says uh, Patriota. All right, moving on here. Iran, low support among Israelis for solo attack, new poll shows, so not even the Israeli people want it. But it doesn't really matter, like I said before, so many times a new poll of Israeli public opinion found surprising low levels of support for a military strike against Iran, and especially if Israel had to go it alone, which they won't. And I included in that, uh, in the beginning there, the video, it's a little bit older, uh, that soldier talking about Ron Paul and that, 
And uh, when did he get cut off? When he was saying that Israel should be able to do it by themselves, right? They were probably the largest stockpile of nuclear weapons, but no, they won't do it alone. General McCaffrey privately briefs NBC execs on war with Iran. That's right. Says many were also, talking about propaganda, played by the undisclosed conflicts of interest whereby uh, they had financial stakes in many of the policies they were pushing on air, talking about General Barry McCaffrey. According to Barstow's second standalone article, his own military industrial complex, that's what McCaffrey had, and was deeply invested in many of the very war policies he pushed and advocated while posing as a objective NBC analyst. The controversy over the Pentagon propaganda program was simply uh, suppressed. I don't know if you guys remember that article. Uh, NBC continued to feature those same ex-generals as analysts, including McCaffrey, as though the whole thing never happened. So on January 12, 2012, McCaffrey presented a seminar to roughly 20 NBC execs and producers, and it was basically a PowerPoint presentation. It says here that he predicts war with Iran within the next 90 days from January 12th, uh, one that is likely to be started by them. So you can go in there and check this out. Iran, the Gulf, the creeping towards war. The Israelis lack any credible conventional military power to counter the Iranian nuclear threat. Don't know about that, but their forced option, they're forced into doing this, would be a preemptive nuclear strike. So more news on the buildup towards uh, war. Obama told to use leadership to stay away from war with Iran when U.S. President Barack Obama has been interrupted by a heckler when he was speaking about foreign policy during a re-election campaign fundraiser in New York. I don't know where they got that. Look at this. He speaks at a fundraiser. I guess this is yesterday. He looks pretty evil right there. Either, either way, as Obama discussed foreign policy on Thursday, a woman yelled out, quote, use your leadership, no war with Iran, end quote. In response, Obama said, quote, nobody's announced a war, young lady. You're jumping the gun a little bit, end quote. And just a, a quick comment here. They don't necessarily want a big bloody war if they could avoid it. If they could just have it, just like the crap not hitting the fan and have it smoothie, that's what the elites, the, the, these social engineers, um, the powers that be, that's what they like. They like smooth transitions, no deviation from the agenda. So if they can do it without saying, oh, no war, then, hey, that's what they'll do. So if they can get a regime change in Syria and then in Iran without actually um, bringing a, a fighter jet over, then that's good. I mean, if they do, then they make money, but it's bad for business, bad for politics. You know, too many bloody bodies to explain and, and uh, uh, loose ends. WikiLeaks Russia gave Israel Iranian system codes. Document by intelligence companies suggests Israel, Russia, contract a deal several years ago under which Israel provided Russia with codes for UAVs it sold to Georgia in exchange for Iranian aerial defense system codes. According to the leaked document, Israel gave Russia the data link codes for unmanned aerial vehicles, i.e. drones, that the Jewish state sold to Georgia, and in return, Russia gave Israel the codes for the uh, Tor M1 missile defense system that Russia sold to Iran. I'm not sure if that's to uh, create some space between Iran and Russia, or if Russia's throwing them under the bus, Russian bank blocks Iran embassy accounts in Moscow. A Russian state-controlled bank has closed down the accounts of Iranian embassy staff in Moscow in obvious submission to unilateral sanctions imposed by the West against Iran's ambassador to Moscow criticized the measure on Friday, accusing the, Iranian, uh, the Russian bank sorry, of surrendering to U.S.-led financial sanctions against Iran. Remember, North Korea, they buckled to because of what? Because of food aid. And in Pakistan, they have what? They have aid. That's why they still allow them to drone bomb them, because they're getting aid. Just like in Egypt, why did the Egyptians uh, not pursue these NGO groups that they were detaining, like the 15 individuals? Because the U.S. threatened to cut off aid. I mean, they, and it's not really the U.S. The U.S. is just used as like a proxy for this world government. So it's just they got, they got them by the short hairs, as they say. And that's how they like to do it. So let's starve the Iranians. Israeli officials say starve Iranians to stop nukes. Well, sorry, the West should adopt North Korean model of Tehran. Hunger in Iran could prompt regime to consider whether nuclear adventure is worthwhile. Jerusalem uh, officials says Iran citizens should be starved in order to curb Tehran's nuclear program. Officials in Jerusalem said on Wednesday, head of uh, Natiano's upcoming trip to Washington, Quote, North Korea is halting its nuclear program in order to receive aid and food, and this is what should be done with Iran as well, one unnamed official has said. Moving on here, we have U.S. prepares to refuel Israeli planes striking Iran, says report following.
Israeli calls on U.S. to toughen its stance on Iran's nuclear energy program. Pentagon officials have announced preparations for the aerial refueling of Tel Aviv planes that may strike Iran. They may include Islamic Revolution Guard Corps. Ah, see, I mentioned that before, remember? And its elite uh, Quds Force, regular uh, Iranian military bases, and the Ministry of Intelligence and Security. Uh, Depka file quoted the officials as saying... Remember I mentioned that the Seymour Hersh article way back from 2000 and what, 7, 2008, during the research I was doing. That's what they're going to do, along with assassinations and that. They're going to airstrike, uh, strategic strikes the bases. Uh, Congress, Iran arming Mexico drug cartels and smuggling drugs into the U.S. So now they created this. Look at this. Remember the, the uh, uh, I guess you call it a BS story about the Iranian assassins and that? It says here, House panel passes bill claiming Iran is arming Mexico drug cartels and citing border violence and smuggling drugs into the U.S. using sophisticated Hezbollah narco tunneling. That's right. It's bill HR 3783 of all the ridiculous, contrived, distorted pieces of propaganda the U.S. government has fabricated against Iran. This has to be the most disturbing of them all. Finishing up with Iran, Pakistan rejects U.S. sanctions threat will expand energy ties with Iran, isolating Iran, proving extremely difficult for the powers that be in the global government. Uh, position, remember this article I covered, February 2nd, 2012, position unchanged, no backtracking on Iran gas, uh, gas pipeline, Pakistan said, because they're getting threatened by the West. Remember India, you better take our oil uh, and not go with Iran, but India said, you know, you... And they're reportedly going to trade with Iran for their oil while they buy uh, Western jets, fighter jets. So, I don't know. United Nations censures Syrian government. In a meeting in Geneva, Switzerland, the UN Human Rights Council on Thursday passed a resolution condemning Syria for widespread violations that may amount to crimes against humanity. Well, Kim, we still have a very strong uh, opposition to foreign intervention from inside Syria, from outside Syria. Um, we don't have the United Nations uh, Security Council um, approval, legitimacy, credibility that comes with the international community making a decision. Uh, we have a very dangerous set of uh, actors in the region, Al-Qaeda, Hamas, and those who are uh, on our terrorist list, to be sure, supporting claiming to support the opposition. You have many Syrians more worried about what could come next. So there you go. Hillary Clinton admits U.S. and al-Qaeda. Al-Qaeda terrorists airlifted from Libya to aid Syrian opposition. Remember from November of last year, the same al-Qaeda terrorists who fought U.S. troops in Iraq helped NATO overthrow Colonel Gaddafi and now are being airlifted into Syria, or they were, to aid rebels there and toppling President uh, Bashar al-Assad. And we certainly remember this. Libya's new rulers offer weapons to Syrian rebels. One step closer to civil war. And this is, remember, Clinton kept saying they're going to head to a civil war. Uh, Syrian rebels form military council to oppose Assad regimes. Clinton knew that it was going to be a, a civil war when this happened, when they do this. It was going to cause a civil war, and that's exactly what they want. It's to divide and conquer. Syria's rebel leader plead for ammunition. Rebel commander said dissident fighters have, quote, ran out of bullets, end quote. Syria says it has seized large caches of weapons from rebels in Bab Amur, neighborhood of Homs, after they cleared uh, the area of armed groups. And they also found the bodies of that journalist, which I'm thinking were probably killed by the actual rebels, because they were the ones that holding that area. Libyan government to give $100 million to Syrian rebels. That's right, $100 million uh, clams or bones. So it's here, Qatar, KSA, Kingdom of Saudi Arabia, seek bloodshed in Syria by arming rebels, so they're arming the rebels. Speaking of Saudi Arabia, ex-senators in the United States say Saudi Arabia may be linked to 9-11, you think? Turkey mauling a Kosovo-like plan for Syria, a humanitarian corridor, a no-fly zone, an aerial blockade. Mm. Without a UN Security Council directive, like Clinton said. Vladimir Putin of Russia says Syrians should decide who runs their country and not outside forces. Britain signs a deal to ship out military hardware from Afghanistan to where? Oh, Central Asia, Kazakhstan. That's right. U.S. troops are killed by Afghan colleagues and intelligence officials shot dead in Pakistan. Yeah, 